This gorgeous Lumnit cowl is made using the sand stitch and it's beautiful and super easy to make. You'll do a simple two row repeat for this lovely texture. It's not a reversible stitch since on the other side you'll see the broken rib stitch. Thanks to Studio Knit for showing me the sand stitch. This helped me design this cowl, which I'm calling the Sand Cowl. My name's Catherine, and I'm excited that you're watching Ms. Yarn so that we can knit things up together. And before we get started, I'll ask you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my easy to follow tutorials. Today we're going to cover number one, how to cast on. We'll be using the chain cast on. Number two, how to do the sand stitch. And number three, how to bind off. We'll use the stretchy bind off this time. For the supplies, I assembled the Martha Stewart loom so I would have 52 pegs, but you can also use a smaller round loom. I have a pattern also available in the description below for the 41 peg loom that I had used for this white cowl. But regardless of the brand of loom that you're using, you'll also need just one ball of yarn, a hook, a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle. So let's get started. So before we cast on, you're going to need to put six pieces of the Martha Stewart loom together. So I'm using two of the curved end pieces and then four of the smaller straight pieces. You'll put pegs in every other hole and you're going to alternate between green pegs and pink pegs. You should also mark one green peg as peg one. When you're done, you'll have 52 pegs and the space between the center of one peg to the center of the next peg would be three quarters of an inch. So now that the loom has been put together, let's cast on using the chain cast on. So you can see how I've marked peg one with some green tape. So next I'm going to start making my slip knot. You put the slip knot on peg one and you put the tail in the middle of the loom and you keep your working yarn in front of the loom. And with your hook, you're going to dive into the loop and pull a bit of working yarn upwards as if you're going to purl. This is how Deborah Shaw explained it in her YouTube video, which I'm linking to above. You'll make a big loop that's large enough for your two fingers, and you'll put that loop inside of the loom. That loop is eventually going to go behind peg two, which is on the left of peg one. Put two or three fingers inside it, and with your left hand, you're going to take your working yarn and you're going to feed it through pegs two and three. And then you're going to um, grab that yarn with your right hand to put it through the loop to make a new loop. So now you've got this big loop, which is behind peg three. With your left hand, you're going to feed the working yarn through the loom. You're going to put it through the, that loop and make a new loop. Now that new loop is behind peg four now. So again, you'll feed the working yarn through the pegs and put it through that loop to make a new loop. And this time that big loop is going to go behind peg five. So you're going to keep feeding your working yarn through the pegs and putting it through the loops in the back to make new loops. Now, there are other ways to do the chain cast on. On the Deborah Shaw tic-tac-toe cowl video that I linked to before, both of her hands are on the outside of the loom and that's where she's working this chain cast on. So feel free to check out that video. It, that could be easier for you. And there's also a good Luma hat video that shows the chain cast on being done using a crochet hook. So I'm linking to that one as well above. At this point, you can do the chain cast on on your own and let's meet again when we're almost done casting on. So here I've cast it on all the way around the loom and I just need to work peg 52. So I put the loop behind, I feed the working yarn through, I make a new loop and with this loop, I'm going to put it over top of peg one. And then I'm going to tighten it up. So you should see one strand of yarn on the outside of the pegs 
and two strands of yarn on the inside of the pegs. And now your chain cast on is done. The sand stitch is made up of an easy two row repeat. Row one is a knit one purl one sequence and row two is made up of all purl stitches. So let's start with row one and take note that when I do my e-wrap, my e-wrap version of the knit stitch, I'm not going to knit over right away. So I e-wrap peg one and then on peg two, which is on the left, I'm going to purl. I dive in with my hook I get the working yarn and pull it upwards to make a new loop. I take the old loop off the peg, put the new loop on the peg, and then tighten it a bit. Then I'm going to wrap the next peg, which is peg three, with an E-wrap. And then I'm going to purl peg four. Next, I'm going to e-wrap on peg five and I'm going to purl on, on peg six. So keep doing this knit one, purl one sequence. And I suggest that you don't knit over your e-wraps right away. And that's because it's a visual cue for you to know that you've done stitches for row one. On a previous version of this cowl, I myself was keeping track of rows in my head and I ended up doing two purl rows in a row and it was a really obvious mistake for me. So if you don't knit over right away, you're going to be able to keep track of where you are. So you can do row one on your own and we'll meet again when we're closer to um, peg 52. So here I've jumped ahead. I've alternated my knit stitches and purl stitches for this row one, and I'm just finishing up. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do an e-wrap on peg 51, and I'm going to purl on peg 52. And now row one is done. So next we're going to start row two and row two is all purl stitches. On peg one, we have three loops and that's normal. We're going to knit over the two bottom loops over that peg. And then we're going to purl because we're doing purl stitches for all of row two. Then we're going to purl peg two, just like normal. And for peg three, let's knit over that bottom loop first. And then we're going to purl. Let's purl on peg four. And then on peg five, first we knit over from the row before and then we're going to purl. Okay, looks great. So you've probably got the hang of it by now. So on your own, you can do purl stitches all around the loom. And let's meet later when we get closer to peg 52. So I'm just finishing up row two. So on peg 51, I'm going to knit over that bottom loop. It's from the row before. And then I'm going to purl on that uh, peg 51. And then I'm going to purl on peg 52. Okay, very nice. So that's the last stitch of row two. So now row two is complete. And that's the two row repeat of the sand stitch. So now for row three, you're going to knit and purl just like you did on row one. So at this point on your own, you can do the sand stitch following this two row repeat. I personally knit up to 10 inches or 25 centimeters. And my last row was not a purl row. My last row was actually a knit one purl one row. So have fun and I'll see you when it's time to bind off. 
So on my own, I've made the cowl the size that I'm looking for. And the sand stitch is looking pretty fantastic, if I do say so myself. And now I'm just about ready to bind off and I just need to knit over on a couple of pegs. Now let's do a stretchy bind off, which will match up really well with the chain cast on. So let's cut off a really long piece of yarn, wrap your yarn around the loom two and a half times and then snip it off. Next, we'll need to thread our yarn needle with that super long tail. So for the stretchy bind off, think down, up, behind. We go down peg one with our yarn needle and there's going to be a lot of yarn to pull, um, especially at the very beginning. We'll go up on peg 52. And then we go behind peg one. Next, we go down peg two. And take note that when you're going down and up these pegs, you need to be pulling a bit tightly. So keep things a little bit snug for the stretchy bind off. We go up peg one. And then we go behind peg two. And then we go down peg three. Then up peg two. And behind peg three. So we go down on the left which is peg four. We go up on the right, which is peg three. Then we go behind on the left. So continue with your stretchy bind off by going down on the left, up on the right, and behind on the left. So let's bind off on our own and we'll meet again when we're closer to peg 52. See you soon. So here I fast forwarded quite a bit. I'm going down on peg 52. I'm going up on peg 51. And then behind peg 52. And down on peg one. Okay, great. So now that's it for my down, up, behind sequence. So now it's time to take the cowl off of the loom. So starting with peg two, with my hook, I'm going to take each loop off of every peg. 
So I'm just going to work my way all the way around the loom. So let's do this on our own for a bit so the video doesn't get too boring. So here I've gone ahead obviously and I'm almost done taking off all of the loops off of the loom. Okay, wonderful. So I've removed the cowl from the loom, so I'm going to get the loom out of the way now. So let's have a look now at the cowl now that it's off of the loom. So I'm looking at the bind off edge and I think it looks pretty good. Let's have a look at the sand stitch. I think that these bumps add a really nice texture to this cowl. So now it's going to be time for us to weave in those tails and then we're going to be good to go. So let's turn the cowl inside out. Then with our yarn needle, we're going to bring that tail from the bind off edge um, all the way to the center of the scarf by just going through all of those bumps that, uh, that you can see there. So let's look at our bind off edge from the right side of the cowl. And as you can see, it's uh, looking pretty good. Let's remove the yarn needle. Um, that way we can use that yarn needle to weave in the tail from the cast on. I'm pulling on the tail so I can see this hole better. I want to put the tail through this hole um, so that the tail is on the inside of the cowl rather than going towards the outside. Then I'm going to weave it through these bumps and I'm going to meet the other tail in the middle of the cowl. And so once the tails have met in the middle, just tie a knot and snip off the ends and you're done. And now let's have a look at this cowl. It's great to be finished. As you can see, it's looking fabulous and it will be perfect for this fall. The two edges look great. The bumps of the sand stitch add subtle interest to this cowl. I'd love it if you could make this sand stitch cowl. And if you're on Instagram, you can post it with the hashtag sand cowl and be sure to tag me as well at, at hello Ms. Yarn. That way I can see your work. And don't forget that you can also make this on a 41 peg loom. I have a pattern for both the Martha Stewart loom that I used here and the 41 peg loom. Um, you can see the description below for them. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video.